Yo, what's up, guys? Uh, welcome to the first ever podcast. Um, today, I am with my friend, pastor, leader, uh, Christian Cole. Shout out to you. Shout out. So, um, so you're the first guest on this podcast, bro. Wow. I'm honored. <laughs> no, uh, for you, all of you guys watching, um, there's been this feeling that I've been, I think it's been a long time that I've had like ideas of podcasts and stuff like that. We actually recorded a few of them, but they never went live. But, uh, we don't know where they are, the lost files. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, it's actually, it's called talk to me. Um, and something that I want to do is just bring out different topics, different things with different people. Uh, today's guest is going to be Christian Cole and we just want to talk about some things and, you know, I want to get people together, talk about the situation that's going on, how to go through these things and also how to, um, enjoy in, in times of crisis, because a lot of people look at the negativity, but also, you know, um, there is a lot of positivity into this. Yeah. But uh, now, before we start talking deep into different topics, just want to say some stories that I have with uh, Christian Cole. Oh, shoot. <laughs> um, Christian Cole is one of my closest friends from Boston or in general. Um, it's funny how we met. Um, we met in a basement uh, at Pastor Benjamin's house. I think you were, <laughs> you were starting to join Vida Real or you were like in the moves of of working with Vida Real. And I remember I stayed over that night because I used to visit a lot when I was in, um, when I was in Boston. Well, I'm from New York. I'm originally in New York right now because of this whole pandemic, but I used to visit there all the time. And I remember I walked into a basement and the first thing I see is Christian come out of a door and I'm like, Oh, Hey, nice to meet you. He's like, Hey, <laughs> yeah. There's more to that story. Yeah, there is more to we'll that. Leave the but, details out. Yeah, we'll do that. And but no, um, I think we went through. Christian and I went through a lot. Um, I think um, moving, making the decision of moving to Boston for me was maybe not thought out well or planned out well at the beginning. Um, I hit a few rocks, a few, uh, uh, a few times. You know, it wasn't going going up. Sometimes it looked like I was going down. Uh, I think Christian was the first person that made me cry without me even talking. <laughs> but um, no, honestly, like I admire this guy. I learned a lot from him. Um, I know I gave him a few headaches, but um, no, I think that, you know, you taught me a lot, to be honest. I was, I think I was 19 when I moved. And yeah. So, you know, like at 19, you make decisions where, it's like we're not gonna say what the decisions were but like you know i moved there for two reasons and to be honest um i think god works in ways because those first two years were rough and then the past year and a half it's just been amazing you know been learning a lot right. from mistakes and yeah so i think like god put you in my way to um to learn different things you know and to become an adult and not act like a and that's just one of the things you know there's plenty of things uh through this podcast i'm going to be talking a little bit about my life as well and what god did to me just a lot of people think that it's just like oh hugo was uh born in a church this this and that but um in reality there was a lot of different turns that i took yeah but but yeah it's been um it's been a road you know now i'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and i'm just trying to create new content trying to just do different things and that's why i had you uh, as my first guest because you've seen pretty much everything i've gone through you know you've seen from the bottom to the highest and um so yeah that's something i wanted to share through this whole podcast you know a little bit about my life and also introduce people that have helped me and you've been one of those you 
uh, persons that God put in my path to become a better person. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. I think that, like, like you said, you've grown over the years. I think that your best years are in front of you. I don't even think you you've hit it. I think you have the key to, to get there now, which is, is the hardest part for every single one of us, especially when we see like failure or we see like things not go the way that we want. But I think the most important thing is perspective, like knowing that God created you to succeed. God created you with a purpose. God created you to do something great. And like something that like I love um, about myself, like I I know that doesn't sound like humble or anything, but like it's, I mean, it's just true. We got to stop with the false humility. We all have good stuff. But one, good thing I can say about myself is that um, I I have a very hard time giving up on people. And I think that um, if more of us were like that, when we didn't just drop somebody at the first failure or the first, the first time something didn't go the way they did or the first time that they screwed up, because like the thing is, we don't give young people enough credit like and we don't give them enough grace either like we're young like we're learning like you're learning like we have to give each other grace to move on so it's like we ha- we can't lose the perspective that in every single person there's something great like god has something for them it doesn't matter how many times somebody messes up it doesn't matter how many times somebody spits in your face like god still has a purpose for that person and like i love to see now like you're such a creative person. You're somebody who um, God uses to see things in a different perspective that somebody like me isn't going to see them. Um, and that's what, that's what I love to see. Like, I love to see like podcasts like this come out, something new, something creative, something where people are going to learn something in a creative way. And I, and I think that that's all part of your purpose, man. So I love like what you're doing now, you know? Yeah, thank you. No, definitely trying to do something different. And like you were saying, something that I've learned through the years was um, when you're a teen, that's where you learn. It's like if you want to be a a professional soccer player, you have to practice. So your your teen years, your decisions that you make as a teen, not all of them are going to be great. Not all of them are going to be perfect. But that's practice. Exactly. And... Sorry, <laughs> but, okay. um, um, you know, like that's, I, I see that as a practice. I see that as, um, as God is showing you, because if God made every step, right, you wouldn't be humble. You wouldn't learn. So I think that's what happened to me. You know, I had to suffer so much in order for me to learn, you know, to, because when you, when you're in a house with your parents and everything, you don't realize, you know, all the work that goes into providing a house, providing a room, providing food. And, you know, like, and that's to another level where you're like, oh, shoot, it's not easy. You know, paying bills when you're just relaxing in your room, you're doing homework. And it makes you think like, damn, I should have done a lot better in school, like all the time that I had. And now, like, um, that was my practice. And now I'm practicing for my next step, you know. For example, you are, um, you're a dad now. So yeah. you're like in another level, you know, you weren't, you, you had a you young moments. I'm not calling you old, but no, you yeah. <laughs> moments, you know, but like you went, you went for, from, uh, being provided to being the one who provides, provided. Now, you know? So through all those times, we have to learn all the different things. So one thing that I like to say to young people is like, if you messed up, it's okay. You know? Yeah. Just don't do it again. And if you yeah, like you're learning, it, dude. Like, exactly. it's, like we got it as young people, we need so much perspective. Yeah. And that's and, something that we lack so much is like, we lack the right perspective on a situation. Like we feel like we messed up and our life is over, but like you're the reason that God allows us to fail. And the reason that we're even allowed to fail is because there's a lesson to be learned in it. You know, now what not to do. Yep. You know what I mean? So that's, a, that's, you're a hundred percent right on that. Yeah. So, you know, like that's something that I've always, I've always thought about. And I, I, that's something I do agree with you. You are a person that doesn't give up on people because there was a time where 
everyone around me kind of gave up on me. They're like, he's going to do it again. He's going to mess up again. I remember I came out of a uh, discipline and they were like, no, nope, he's going to be back to it. And the jokes started coming. Yeah. And they like, el pastor de disciplina. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of jokes behind it. But to be honest, you were one of like the five people that didn't give up on me. And yeah. for the people watching that might be leaders or, you know, their goal is to be a pastor or something. One of the things that I did experience a lot was um, even leaders talk about you, you know, and I don't consider a leader. I don't consider someone to be a leader when they, you know, they make you feel down. I think a leader is someone who doesn't give up. It doesn't matter how many times you fail. For example, yeah. God, you know, like we all make mistakes, but the Bible says that there is no greater sin that God can't forgive. You know, no matter what you did in life, God is going to forgive you. So I yeah. think God is calling leaders to have the same heart as God. And that's something that spoke to me through this whole time of messing up and stuff like that. It was like, you know, there's the people that you see who really love other people. And there's the people that are just in it to just be like, oh, you know, like, I'm going to pick the best one. And yeah, and some, like something that, I, sorry to cut you off, but something that I've learned like, like in my own life is that all of those people help you grow because, which is like a weird, like outlook on it, I think. But like, I use that negative energy to, to in a way prove people wrong. Yeah. I use that, that like negativity. And I had like, my goal as a leader, because this is the problem in society. We think because someone has a title that that is what qualifies them. So I studied, there's, there's pastors who studied eight to 12 years and they're doctors, they're doctors now, but they don't have one pastoral bone in their body. They've studied, they know what the book says, they know the theory, but they're not pastors. A pastor is somebody who takes care of the heart of the people. Yep. So like a title doesn't qualify you. This is what I tell young people. This is what I tell people in, in, in recuperation from alcohol and drugs. Like you need to begin to do what God has called you to do without the title first. Like, so if God has told you you're a prophet or you're a pastor or you're an evangelist or you're a preacher or whatever God has said, like you're going to be a missionary and you're going to go to this nation and you're going to do that. Begin to function in what God has called you to do without your title. The title will come, but the title is a man made like, that's man saying you are authorized to do this, but why are we allowing man to authorize us or waiting for man to authorize us when God has already authorized us? So if God told you that's what you're going to do, that's what you're going to do. So yeah. begin to function first without the title like that. That's our problem. But going back to it, like I allow that all of that negativeness and all of the positivity, because there's people who are really going to love what you're doing. And there's people that are really going to, they're probably jealous uh, most of the time. That's what I've seen, at least in my experience. Like there's going to be a lot of people that are jealous about what you're doing. So they're going to talk bad. They're going to look for, for influencers, quote unquote. There's so many influencers today, but they're going to look for people that agree with them to put you down. And the thing is, a lot of people are just jealous of what you're doing. Allow that to feed and be, make that a positive thing. Make like everything you put out. Don't talk to the haters. Don't talk to the negative people. Like you stay, you keep doing what you're doing, but allow that to be a positive, uh, use that negativity in a positive way too. Yeah. You know, something that always stuck with me was actions speak louder than words. Yeah. And I think talking, it's super easy. Me telling you that I'm going to do something that I'm going to become something. It's super easy. Everybody can say it, but the fact that to do it, you know, it's where it gets really, really hard. But something that I've learned as well as, you know, was everybody is so important. If God has you here is because you're an important piece to whatever group you're, you're at. It could be your youth, exactly. it could be your cell group. It could be even your church. Even if the church has a thousand five hundred members, you are still important, you know? And something that I do love is there's a parable where, uh, Jesus tells um, where he's talking about the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. You yeah. know, I, I love how Jesus compare a human, an animal, 
and an item, you know? Yeah. It says that um, he left the 99 to go for the one. Yeah. Why? Because, because without that one, the 99 were not complete. There was 100. You know, without, it says that she was looking for the coin, one coin. For us, sometimes we drop a penny or whatever. It's like, oh, it's whatever. It's a coin. But this girl, it says that she looked all over the house, all over her room. And I imagine her throwing pillows, blankets, throwing the beds. Why? Just to find that one coin. And what talks to me is like, these three things were not completed because one thing was missing. The sun was missing. The sheep was missing and the coin was missing. Yeah. Sometimes we don't see that God loves teamwork. God loves a team. God doesn't love just the pastor. That's, That's why the it. pastor requires a team. Something that I like to tell young people and even people who are going through maybe depression or they don't feel loved or anything. I'm a firm believer that everybody is important. I've been in, in parts of my life where I've been set aside and it, those moments is where they make you stronger. And in those moments, it's where God leads you to get closer with, with him. You know, the moments where I was alone, I was closer to God. Because sometimes we do, there's a lot of people that do things to fit into our group. It's like, oh, I want to be part of that cool group. I don't think there's a such cool group at church. You know, like we're all the same. God loves us. Like there's no bigger person, you know? Yeah. Um, so I definitely believe, you know, to never give up. Um, if you're going through things like that, talk to someone, talk to your leader. Your leaders are there for that, you know? And me, yeah. like, for example, Pastor Benjamin is like my spiritual father, but also yeah. like my father, father, because I didn't grow up with a dad. And he was there at the darkest moments, you know, and he would bring hope. So I think one thing that definitely helps out is being honest, you know, go up to somebody and tell them, Hey, listen, I feel like this. I honestly don't know what to do anymore because when you open up to the person that God put you as your leader, God is going to speak through him to you, you know? And that's what happened to me. So um, I definitely believe that giving up on people is really, um, I know there's times where people fall super, super low, but like, um, one person, one of my favorite actors, um, he's one of my favorite actors, but I suck at names, but Iron Man, you know, the guy from, yeah. from Iron Man. Yeah. He, he was arrested before he even became this great actor. You know, like if you look at, there's still people that talk bad about him and they bring up the photos from the past, but that didn't stop him from being the most paid actor in the world. Yeah. You know? And hundred percent. Millions of people cried when he when he died, you know, in, in the movie Avengers. And he created this whole thing. You can search up on YouTube testimonies um, of people um, who decided to change because they saw a change on him. Yeah. And now through us, we can change people as well. You know, Sometimes, Robert Downey Jr., I think. Is yes, the that's, that's the one. We'll stick it with Jr. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like there's a lot of people that might have given up on you, but there is still people that still care for you. There's people oh, yeah. that still want the best for you. All you have to do is be honest about it. Hey, listen, I feel like this. I need someone to talk to. Can we please talk and just open up? You know, God will lead you to the right person to talk to. That's it. Yep. But um, yeah, I think, um, I don't know if you want to leave us with a, a nice positive um, maybe a quote that you like, a verse that you like, or something that you feel in your heart to share with people that, um, you know, or might be a struggling, struggling to this, especially in these times where a lot of people are stuck at home, you know, they're not able to go out, see their friends, distract themselves. Maybe there's problems at home and stuff like that. Maybe just like a quick word for them. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think right now, what has been in my heart all day is um, actually we were reading the Bible this morning um, and we've been reading all through Deuteronomy and it's basically Moses telling his whole process to the next generation. It's him giving like life lessons, key life lessons. Something that I'm really taking out of that is that we have to go through the process that God's calling us to do. And 
a lot of times we want to be the Moses. We want to be the Joshua. We want to be great people of God. But we don't want to pay the process that it takes to get there first. And a lot of times God is calling you to do something um, that you may not want to do. Everybody wants to preach, but nobody wants to sweep the floor and clean up afterwards. Mm -hmm. God's calling us to, to have servant hearts before anything. And I think that once we understand that God is calling us to a process and God is bringing us to a new process, I think that that's when we can understand exactly where God's leading us. I know what God has spoken over my life, that I'm going to preach in great places, that I'm going to go around the world, that I'm going to be a missionary, all of that. But I think one of the greatest things, but I think that one of the biggest lessons that I have ever uh, learned personally is that God wants me to serve his people. So right now you're at home, you're in a process like, like Google, you right now you're back in New York. Um, but everybody like there's no physical church service or there's no physical jobs and there's no, we're not meeting in physical places. But something that I can see is that God right now is he's pulling out the gifts in people. Like I love to see that, like imagine the great things that started from this quarantine. Imagine the great things that can start from this quarantine. There's writers who haven't finished their book. There's songwriters that haven't written a song in years. There's, there's so many things that God is trying to pull out of this time. And he's yeah. starting so many moves. Like, this is a move of God. I believe that this, this podcast can reach thousands of people. And I believe that it will. Millions of people. I believe that, you know, whatever God wants to do through this, he's going to do. But it's so important to understand that we need to follow the process along the way. Allow God to speak to us through this time, too, you know. Yeah, definitely. No, and uh, I believe that, you know, sometimes we have to go through through a battle, you know, sometimes in, in order for you to become a champion at any type of sport, you have to go through a whole league, you know, Amen. you have to go through a bunch of different people. And I like to compare uh, life, like in goals and stuff with like things that we go through, you know, I know there's a lot of people here that maybe they want to be professional athletes and they want to be doctors that want to be something but in order for you to become to that like what you want and to get to that goal you have to go through the process you know and sometimes we look at the process as a as a bad thing yeah. but in reality it's such a blessing if you really take it in this moment like if you really look at the positivity out of it and one thing you did say there's so many things that can come out of this quarantine i think uh for example i tested positive um as everyone knows right and when I found out, bro, I'm not going to lie. Like I broke, like, you know, I'm like, because of everything I had heard and everything and I was scared, you know, but, and I went to God and I'm like, God, why? You know, like there's that half of you that just looks at the negative, bro. Those, I was downstairs in my basement for about 16, 17 days or a little more. Wow. But there was no day that God didn't talk to me. That's awesome. You know, and these times can be used to connect with God. Because if you want to be a pastor, you need to be pastored by the Spirit, you know? Yeah. You need, you, need to, you, you need to listen to the Word of God. YouTube is filled with different preachings. We have all the preachings from Pastor Lewis. We have preachings from you now. We have preachings from other great pastors around the world that we can be feeding ourselves with. You know, there is amazing worship songs on YouTube, Spotify, like, that you can just create a playlist and connect with God. Like one thing that I, that I tell a lot of people, and I know we've heard this example before, it's that when our phone is dying, all we think about is we need to plug it in because we don't, it's rare that people that let their phone die and they don't care. You know, it's like, no, my phone can't die. My phone can't die. And that's how I look at it. You know, like that's how I have to be with God. My spirit needs to be stronger than my flesh. My flesh can't be stronger than my spirit, you know? So I need to be connected with God all the time, all the time, you know? Just like how I connect the phone. And another thing that I want to tell people before we end this is no matter what people say about you, no matter what people, um, what people say of you or think of you or whatever, don't let yourself go down through the comments. You know, because God has placed something strong in you. 
Yeah. Like we look at different things. Like for example, the other day we ordered pizza and it's crazy how the pizza is the most valuable thing in it, you know? And, but like the pizza comes in a box, maybe the box is probably like what? 10 cents or less, yeah. but without the box, the pizza can be brought to your house. Come on. And that's how I look at it. You know, for people, I may just be a box, but they don't know what's inside of it. You know? Yeah. So there might be a lot of boxes, a lot of water bottles, but what God has placed inside of you, it's the important thing that you can bring to people. That's you the know? word. So like, that's how I look at it. You know, people can be saying you're a box, but they don't know the high quality pizza you have inside of it, you know? That's so it. like God uses the smallest things to bring the biggest things to life. So I just want to say that to people, you know, don't, don't be let down of anything fill yourself up with like the word of God, read the Bible, listen to music and definitely don't pay attention to what's outside. Because when we pay attention to what's outside, that's when we just become like in the negative mood. But I want to thank you for being part of this. Um, I'm definitely excited to see all the different people uh, are going to come in and be part of this. And I just want to say shout out to you. Um, I'll be posting your, your social medias here. Uh, everybody follow him. This guy, I'm, he's like definition of a fire in the, in the, in the <laughs> supernatural world. But um, no, I, and I just want to thank you too, you know, for um, believing in, in a group of people in such a small place in, in the world, in the United States and, Massachusetts, um, you know, I love you and everyone else loves you too. And just keep doing you and hopefully soon we get to be together again. Soon, bro. Amen, bro. Can't wait to see you. I hope uh, this turns out to be something. I know this is going to turn out to be something huge. So, yeah, bro. Sounds good, man. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you. God bless you, bro. God bless. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye.